On the evening of August 3, 1492, a carrack accompanied by two smaller caravels left the port of Palos de la Frontera in the southern Iberian Peninsula. Aboard the ship was none other than Christopher Columbus, who had just recently received the go signal from his royal sponsors, Ferdinand II of Aragon and Isabella the Fern of Castile. Columbus's goal and promise to the monarchs was to find a better, faster, and much safer sea route to the east that would spare them the trouble of passing either the perilous Cape of Good Hope or the long, arduous journey across the Eurasian landmass. Several weeks later, Columbus did in fact reach land, but that wasn't Asia. Instead, he set foot in an entirely different continent, one whose existence was unheard of in the old world before. Columbus's landing in what would later be called the New World was a pivotal moment in history. Before that event, Europeans were almost entirely unaware that there were other continents aside from Europe, Asia, and Africa lying to the west of the vast Atlantic Ocean. The arrival of the Europeans marked the beginning of the catastrophic period characterized by the loss of sovereignty, territory, and life. It marked the end of a long period in history that stretches back to the beginning of time and is almost forgotten up until now. A long lost history that might even change everything we know about our own beginnings. Upon arriving in the New World, Columbus referred to the indigenous peoples he encountered as Indios, Indians, believing he had reached the outskirts of the Indian Ocean and consequently the Asian continent. This misnomer, Indians, was quickly adopted by subsequent European explorers and settlers as a blanket term to describe all the indigenous inhabitants of North and South America. This label persisted even after Europeans recognized that these lands were not part of Asia, but entirely separate continents with diverse cultures and peoples. Indeed, the original inhabitants of the Americas were far from a homogeneous group living under a unified rule. The continents were home to a wide array of cultures, languages, and social structures, ranging from nomadic tribes to highly sophisticated civilizations like the Aztecs, Mayas, and Incas, each with its own complex societal hierarchies, architectural achievements, and contributions to agriculture, astronomy, and other fields. Going back to Columbus's first voyage, the first New World peoples that they encountered were the Taino. The Taino people welcomed Columbus and his crew, showing them the highest level of hospitality they could muster. Even Columbus himself had to admit that the Taino were a very gentle and noble people. But that didn't shield them from the tragedy and misfortune that would strike them later on. Despite calling them gentle and noble, Columbus thought of the natives as naive and harmless, and he actually abducted 24 Taino people and brought them back to Spain. That wasn't even the end of it. After delivering his promise of finding new lands for Ferdinand II and Isabella, he was given the title of colonial governor and viceroy. However, he proved to be a brutal ruler. He systematically enslaved and abused the natives, coercing them to mine precious metals for the elites back in Europe. Add to that the death and destruction brought by the spread of smallpox and measles from Europe, which the natives weren't immune to, and the Taino were almost completely wiped out. For centuries, the prevailing belief was that the Taino were driven to extinction by European colonization shortly after contact in the late 15th century. It wasn't until the late 20th and early 21st centuries that advanced genetic studies provided concrete evidence of the Taino's survival through their descendants. Aztecs However, the Taino people were only one group of a much, much larger devastation and catastrophe brought by the early waves of colonization. The Aztecs were among the biggest casualties of this tragedy. Before Cortes invaded Mexico, the Aztecs had one of the largest empires in all of the Americas. Spanning large parts of Mesoamerica, the Aztec Empire encompassed the much of what is today central and southern Mexico. The founding of their capital city, Tenochtitlan, was also surrounded in mystery. 
According to a legend, the Aztecs built their capital on an island in Lake Texcoco, guided by a prophecy to look for an eagle perched on a cactus, holding a snake. Tenochtitlan was an engineering marvel that astounds people to this day. Designed with a complex network of canals crucial for transportation, trade, and defense, the city also features an advanced aqueduct system to provide fresh water to its residents. At its heart was the majestic pyramid, both serving as the religious and political center of the empire. The Spanish conquest led to the downfall of the empire. The siege and subsequent fallout led to the widespread destruction of Aztec culture, including its records and codices. Unfortunately, many of these were destroyed in an attempt by the Europeans to eliminate what they saw as paganism. This led to the irreversible loss of a vast amount of Aztec civilization, knowledge, and achievements. But as archaeological excavations continue on this ancient site in Mexico, we might soon know more about the great city and the proud empire it once stood as a symbol of. Mayans Speaking of great civilizations in Mesoamerica, it would be impossible not to mention the Maya, arguably one of the longest civilizations in the Americas with roots dating back to 2000 BC. The Mayan civilization existed in Mesoamerica from antiquity until the Spanish conquest of the 1500s. Unlike the Aztecs, though, Mayan civilization didn't exactly have a strong political center, and it wasn't technically an empire. Still, its influence and enigma can't be understated. Nowadays, the Mayans are known for their frighteningly accurate solar calendar, which includes several cycles or counts that interlock and reset. Contrary to popular interpretation, it didn't really predict the end of the world, but rather the end of their calendar cycle. What makes their calendar truly fascinating is how it was deeply integrated into their cosmology, religion, and daily life, allowing them to schedule agricultural, ceremonial, and administrative activities. The Maya also used their calendars to make astronomical calculations with remarkable accuracy, predicting solar eclipses, solstices, and equinoxes. The Mayans were also known for having the only fully developed writing system and building impressive structures. Despite being one of the most technologically advanced civilizations in the Americas, the classic Mayan civilization collapsed in the 9th century. To this day, nobody knows what happened to them exactly. Some say it was due to drought, while others believe they were caught in internal strife. Remnants of the great civilization still existed and flourished until the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors. But the mystery of why they disappeared from their great cities was still a matter of research and discussion. Either way, the Mayan civilization was still one of the interesting and enigmatic part of pre-Columbian history. The Inca was another great civilization in the Americas, covering approximately 2 million square kilometers of territory, including parts of modern-day Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, Chile, Argentina, and Colombia, the Inca Empire was the largest in pre-Columbian America. Like the previous two civilizations, the Inca were known for their impressive architectural structures. In addition to these complex structures, they also built agricultural terraces and an extensive network of stone-paved roads that connected Machu Picchu to the rest of the empire. Machu Picchu is perhaps one of the most iconic landmarks in the world, and arguably, the most well-known of all Inca structures, too. Situated at a dizzying height of 800 feet above sea level, Machu Picchu was a breathtaking complex with a rather enigmatic nature because, again, nobody was sure why it was built. Another ongoing mystery was how they achieved such amazing feats of engineering. Building complex structures on a flat land is one thing, but constructing fortresses, temples, and whole new cities in high altitudes is another. While extensive research has been done on the subject, there are still many we don't know because unfortunately, like the Aztecs, the Inca civilization suffered destruction at the hands of the European conquerors. Much of their cities, including the capital Cusco, 
were sieged and destroyed. Fortunately, some of the ruins remain, including the Korikancha, the temple of the sun god Inti, which was said to have been covered in gold a long time ago. While they are far from intact and have been restored several times, these ruins allowed us to catch a glimpse of what was once a glorious empire in the Americas. Iroquois Confederacy Traveling up to the Northern Hemisphere, the North American continent is comprised of a diverse expanse of land that stretches from the frigid Arctic Circle to the warm tropical climates bordering the Caribbean Sea. The Native Americans in the northern part of the New World developed distinct cultures and civilizations, which were vastly different from their neighbors to the south. While nowadays, a large part of this landmass is divided between Canada, United States, and Mexico in the distant past. The continent was home to hundreds of nations. In fact, it was estimated that there had been at least 1,000 Native American civilizations in the United States area alone. Each had its own autonomous government with occasional cultural exchange, trade, and war. As such, alliances and leagues have been established throughout history to maintain peace and cooperation. Perhaps one of the greatest among them was the Iroquois Confederacy, believed to have been established somewhere between 1450 and 1660, with some suggesting an even earlier date. The Iroquois Confederacy was a league of five distinct nations in the southern Great Lakes area, led by a prophet-like figure only known as the Great Peacemaker. It was comprised of established by the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, and Seneca nations, later joined in by the Tuscarora nation, joined in 1722. This confederacy was founded on the great law of peace, emphasizing collective decision-making, peace, and unity among its members. The Confederacy was said to have later influenced the establishment of the United States Constitution, which in turn would impact the independence movements of European colonies from all over the world. Ancestral Puebloans The native inhabitants of North America established a network of communities and alliances for a mutual goal. The Ancestral Puebloans, formerly known as the Anasazi of southwestern United States, was one of them. Although they aren't strictly a confederacy, the ancestral Puebloans built sophisticated and elaborate settlements in the Four Corners area of the United States. Settlements they would later abandon, for unknown reasons. The Puebloans inhabited the region from approximately the year 100 to 1600 CE, with their most flourishing period between 900 and 1150 CE. Known for their incredible architectural constructions, including cliff dwellings, kivas, or subterranean ceremonial chambers, the ancestral Puebloans also built the famous sites in Mesa Verde and Chaco Canyon. With precise stonework and incredible masonry, the buildings were not only a sight to behold, but also a comfortable and safe place to live. So why then did the ancestral Puebloans have to suddenly leave these places in the 13th century? No one knows for sure, Theories range from drought and climate change to social and political factors. The ancestral Puebloans migrated south and east, establishing new settlements along the way. Nowadays, the ancient towns built by the ancestral Puebloans have long been deserted, serving as a haunting yet fascinating legacy of a civilization shrouded in mystery. Mound Builders in the history of the pre-Columbian New World, perhaps few are as mysterious and intriguing as the hundreds of thousands of mounds scattered in North America. Simply because nobody was sure who built them and why. I'm talking about the mound builders of North America. If you have seen the Netflix documentary by Graham Hancock, you are surely familiar with sites like Poverty Point, Cahokia Mounds, and the Serpent Mound. If not, then let me introduce you to these mysterious, gigantic earthworks. Simply put, these mounds are raised earth structures, built over long periods of time, with varying shapes and sizes, from small burial mounds to massive earthworks visible from miles away. 
A common consensus among archaeologists is that these structures served a variety of purposes, including burial sites, platforms for buildings, and as part of ceremonial and religious centers. All of these are built by pre-Columbian inhabitants of North America, only known as the Mound Builders. However, some people, like Graham Hancock, believe there is more to these mounds than what meets the eye. Take, for instance, the Serpent Mound. Located in southern Ohio, the Serpent Mound is an enormous earthwork stretching over 1,300 feet in length. It depicts a serpent with an undulating body and an oval shape at the head. Its origins date back to around 1070 CE, although there is some debate about its exact age and the culture that constructed it. There are theories that the Serpent Mound is more than just an effigy mount, but instead a monument with religious and astronomical significance. For instance, the mouth of the serpent is aligned almost directly to the point where the sun sets. Then, the three center bends also seem to have astronomical importance as well. Each bend, Hancock insists, aligns with the solstices and equinoxes. More interestingly, the coiled tail aligns perfectly with the hinge of the serpent's jaws, pointing directly towards the true astronomical north. Furthermore, he also posited the idea that other mounds, such as the Monk's Mound in Cahokia and the ones in Poverty Point, might have shared the similar functions as that of the Serpent Mound. Then again, this was a speculation for now. Still, one might ask, why go through all the trouble of building it? Why was it so important for the ancient Native Americans to build these magnificent sites through the course of years? or even centuries. With the limited knowledge we have right now regarding mound builders, we can only speculate. America was said to be the last continent ever inhabited by humans, second only to Antarctica. When the Europeans set foot on it, they were almost under the impression that it was an unexplored continent, inhabited only by a few tribes. But now, we know that was completely wrong. The Americas were already home to advanced civilizations that date back thousands of years. The indigenous peoples have attested to that, and they were right. More and more studies are conducted into the fascinating origins of the ancient civilizations in America, shedding light on a history that was buried and almost forgotten. Now, we also know that there might have already been human presence in the continent as far as 18,000 to 26,000 years ago, starting from the arrival of the Paleo-Indians through the land bridge that connects Asia and America. With the development of more advanced tools like LIDAR scanning, we are witnessing the unfolding of these hidden secrets of America's ancient past. Tell us, what was new to you in the video? Subscribe to the channel, and if you're thirsty for more knowledge, just play the video we offer on the left of your screen.